humans in lawn chairs sitting around a campfire after a while they start to smell like it picking their nose in the dark eating it in the dark. Of course, the people to the side of them don't notice because they are caught in their clandestine activities. Everybody's got something to hide around a campfire. Ostensibly, ostensibly, they're conjoined in a primordial act, the primal right of sharing an evening together with a crackling bonfire. Marshmallows, perhaps. Graham crackers. Hershey's chocolate. And if they're wise, an elongated stick for roasting the s'mores. Now you have to wonder, or at least I do wonder, why human beings are drawn to campfires like this. I was passing by one tonight, and as I looked over, I saw the silhouettes of contentment. And I thought to myself, there might just be a prehistoric fixation there. I think we can all relate. Getting transfixed by the flames. Our minds go into metaphoric release. There is a kind of protoplasmic imagination that oozes across our life into the past and into the future. We don't see that the person next to us is eating his boogers. He's too hungry to wait for the s'mores and maybe he's a little snotty about s'mores prefers his boogers instead. That's fine. We don't judge people when we're sitting around a campfire absorbed in our primal ritual. Now, 
every once in a while the saber tooth cat will come and snag somebody, but it's very fast and no one notices because they are so captivated by the flickering flames. And it could happen over and over. There could be a couple dozen prehistoric hominids enjoying their s'mores and their boogers. And they get picked off one by one. saber tooth cats. You ever wonder why the saber tooth cats didn't actually become the more evolved species and were actually saber tooth cats, which would be walking around and creating civilization and swiping their credit cards? The only difference would be that these saber tooth cats might be a little bit hairier and they'd have these big canines. Because surely, if you think about it, pitting our prehistoric ancestors against a saber-toothed cat, well, it must be this. We really must have outsmarted them with our cranial capacity and our spears. We get the saber-toothed cat right in the heart, bring it over to the campfire, put it on a spit, Revolve that cat. Revolve it. Take the two front teeth and pull it right out of the skull. And then drape it across our chest like trophies. I admit to having that kind of savagery in my being. When I'm sitting next to this campfire, and there are absolutely too many people around me. And yeah, I get judgmental because I'm a savage. And I judge my fellow human beings. And I'm like, you'd never last. Not back then, not with me. I've got an entire belt of saber tooth incisors right across my chest, you know. Like Rambo had the bullets with his machine gun, or when Arnold Schwarzenegger was hunting the Predator and had the big bullets on the strap across his chest. Boom. Boom. Well, I just pushed these fat, lousy people to the side. They scream. They're babies. I call them fat and they explode with indignation. They've been coached to be sensitive to everything. They get offended by everything. And here I am, a savage, prehistoric hunter, gatherer. I don't eat s'mores. I eat saber-toothed cats. When I rip off their two front teeth, I either put it on a pelt across my chest, or I drink from it. These so-called humans do not understand what it is to be a savage. Not like I understand it. I'm primitive. I speak slowly, but I carry a big stick. And my clenched fist is a club. <laughs> Pretty soon, none of these humans are left. It's just me and the saber tooths. These guys are my friends. These guys are my people. After the saber tooths have skulked by in the middle of the night and abducted all of my 21st century slob friends, friends, I look at my new friends, the saber tooth cats. A couple dozen just sitting here around the fire, 
chewing on the human remains. And I look at them and they look at me and we just know. They're not gonna fuck with me. They take one look at me and I meet their gaze, I stare them down, they go back to eating their carcass. I'm happy. Finally. I can tell they possess a ferocious intelligence that they've hidden in caves for tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of years until the human beings became so pathetic and lousy that it was time for the saber-toothed cats to come back out and feed and abduct these pathetic 21st century humans and eat them. And you might think that I'm just being barbaric and that's really a testimony to your effete sensitivity. All I gotta do now is train these saber tooths and we will take over, we will start a new civilization where the dominant species possesses a backbone. And before you get carried away and whimper and, and disdain at our plan, I will tell you that these saber tooths, they don't need to dominate because they are dominant. They were hunted to the brink of extinction tens of thousands of years ago and the smartest of them understood that they didn't stand a chance against human beings then because the human beings then were quite savage and quite intelligent enhanced cranial capacity extremely robust physique tall the men were more masculine than you could possibly imagine. And the women were more masculine than masculine men today. They take your skull and crush it in their hands. These were the dominant species of the time. And the smartest of the saber tooths fled, found refuge. They all packed the human remains that they could gather at the time in the depths of the caves and went into hibernation and just slept for thousands and thousands of years. And do you know what caused these magnificent beasts to rise? from the deep to you. With all the cries of the lazy humans, they had become so fat and pampered, decadent, everything's luxury and hedonism, that they're constantly complaining, constantly complaining, and that constant cry of complaint is such Weakness. That weakness was broadcast everywhere across the planet. A certain frequency of weakness. The frequency of weakness wakens the saber toothed cat from the depths. <laughs> they just started coming out of the caves. First, hundreds and then thousands maybe even tens of thousands and the human beings weren't the human beings that these saber-toothed cats once knew thousands and thousands of years ago no 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 these are human beings locked into their smartphones watching tv with their big fat girls Easy kills for these saber toothed cats. Oh, and they just hunted them down. 
and the saber-toothed cats then started to multiply because there was no resistance. Now remember, they're very, very sneaky. They're very, very smart. They are able to elude capture because they began to understand intuitively how human beings operate. Human beings are so lazy, they do nothing to enhance their physique, to become smarter, at least not more than one or two percent of the race. And so these saber-toothed cats had the easiest time, until of course they end up facing the military. But something really special happened when the saber-toothed cat and the military met. Can you guess? <laughs> the military put down the weapons in respect. They knew that they could mow down hundreds of saber-toothed cats at a time. But the saber-toothed cats had no weapons and had such an advanced dignity compared to with human beings. And the military just realized their prowess was basically their numbers and their technology, but not the integrity of their soul. They were just following orders, carrying guns, and had more. Saber-toothed cats had none of that. Each saber-toothed cat was a fierce weapon of individuality that would stop at nothing. Now, again, the saber-toothed cat isn't quite intellectually or analytically intelligent in the same way as a human being today. But the saber-toothed cat again intuitively understood what was happening with the military. Without any hesitation, the weapons were lowered. The generals totally impressed because they saw in the saber-toothed cat something that was lacking in humanity. Not only the physical prowess and superiority, but the indomitable individuality, the indomitable spirit of the saber-toothed cat. They could act in unison as a collective, but a collective of individuals, each of whom is a sovereign, choosing to act in consort with other saber-toothed cats. And so you must understand that we are on our way out. We had beaten these beasts tens of thousands of years ago. And then we just got lazy. We didn't have any natural opponents in the environment. And then we started to prey upon each other. And that's where the classes came from, predation. But everybody got lazy because the predation of human beings upon human beings. It's just intellectual. The humans at the top of the food chain create mental traps for the humans farther down the food chain. And then these humans farther down the food chain just stay in these mental traps. It's called ideology, dogma, religion, education, news media, all of them mental traps. These humans just stay in these cages, and then the humans who, who planted these traps just suck off the fat. Everybody is getting lethargic. And as I speak, the saber-toothed cats are mowing their way through human civilization. And I must say that I am grateful to spend an evening with them at this campfire 
They can feel my respect, my admiration. They can feel that I'm not afraid because I'm so tired of fear. The human race has got the plague of fear and simply follows orders and loses all integrity to authority. And now, we have the saber-toothed cats to answer to. But the thing is, they're not asking questions.